Climate Action News one-on-one, -on -one, brought to you by We Don't Have Time and A Sustainable Tomorrow. My name is Katharina rolf stotter Jansson, and I am the host of this program. Stuart Scott is a systems thinker. With training in a variety of scientific fields and work experience in finance, education and information systems, he knows for his creativity in communicating the urgency and severity of the impact of the current growth economic system on our planet and has been involved in several UN-sponsored climate negotiations. Wonderful to have you with us here, Stuart Scott. Thank you. It's, it's really very, very nice to, uh, to meet with you again, albeit virtually. Wonderful. So in this time uh, with a pandemic, how is Scientist Warning pursuing your work? Um, well, my work is becoming our work. The team, because we are um, in virtual space doing the work that we're doing, uh, it, it seems to be evolving towards away from, from me as the, the, the general, the leader, um, and more towards a, a, a team uh, format. And uh, we're creating a foundation. I've, uh, as, as you may know, I've done everything I've done so far without any funding uh, by choice because of my knowledge of the corrupting influence of money. Uh, um, so so the, we have, are forming a foundation. The team decided they want to try to crowdsource funding rather than go for for the uh, philanthropic dollars. So um, the, the, the work continues. We, we find that the limitation of being in virtual space is not actually a limitation, it's empowering. Uh, people have lots more time. People ha are thrown back on themselves to think about what's going on. Uh, we, I think it's safe to say we all can see that we don't need all of the th stuff that we used to think we needed on a daily basis. And so people are, are saying, gee, do I want to go back to that? Or do I want to go do something different with my life? Um, it's very interesting times of change. Mm -hmm. So everything is working well for the project, the Scientist's Warning Project. Excellent. So from, from your interdisciplinary perspective, is there anything at all that we can learn from, from how we are handling the the COVID-19 pandemic into how we should and have to, well, really should handle the climate crisis? Well, it's pretty clear. Um, I mean, it was clear to me from the start well, that what we were facing was a, I will call it a, a mixed blessing. Now that's not the right word in terms of the suffering that's going on. Um, but it's always it important to remember that, but yes, yes of course. If you and I are, are in developed nations where the worst inconvenience is, is social distancing when we go to the grocery. Um, but there are uh, many, many people, vast numbers of people around the world who are suffering through this because of, of access to, to food, both because of the, the, the COVID crisis and because of the climate crisis. And the two create a double whammy. Um, I, I spoke to someone last night, a team member from the Scientist Warning Project who's in Delhi, an American who is an expat from the U.S. to Delhi because her husband is Indian. And uh, she told me that around there, people are, are uh, either getting it and ultra scared or they're treating it as if it were a superstitious kind of. Uh, and, who, you know, so but the um, what we need to learn, I believe, out of this is that pandemics are part of our future. And this is. Again, they were, pandemics were predicted by climate science that they would become more frequent. Um, we can't say specifically that this one was caused by, by the increased range of, uh, of disease vectors, which is the kind that were predicted, you know, the, uh, 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 like Zika and West Nile virus. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one in particular um, is, coming about because of the same root cause as the climate crisis. So the COVID crisis and the climate crisis, the pandemic crisis and the climate crisis have the same root cause. And how do we, how do we, what do we learn from, from what we're doing now or, or should be doing? Well, uh, 
the the obvious lesson, the low hanging fruit, is that we don't need as much stuff as we thought we did, as we were told, as we believed, because it was sold to us on a daily basis. I mean, I I view television and internet um, as be- merely a matrix for advertising. It's just the stuff that surrounds the advertising. It's 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 really advertainment. You know, instead of infotainment. It's advertainment. It's just entertainment so that we can have something that will, we can throw you that message that you need to buy this. And it's very, it's, it's um, kind of despicable. Well, luckily, you- luckily, Sweden, we still have uh, television channels without any commercials, believe it or not. Oh, hmm. are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so, so apart from, apart from consumer behavior, what else could we learn? Learn from COVID. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we, we can learn um, solidarity. Mm. We can I was hoping that, you would say that as an educator. Yes, we, we're all in this together. Well, it, if we, if we had enough time, I would say everything in your mind about this. I think we share the same thoughts, um, the same emotional response to it. Um, we we I think we need to really learn, really deeply learn, and I want to return to this with some emphasis. Uh, in a moment, we need to learn that the economic system that we have been saddled with is destructive. It's destructive to us, it's destructive to the planet, it's destructive to our ability to survive on this planet. And we can't see that because it's a parasite that masks itself from, from our viewing it correctly and accurately. And that's growth economics. You cannot grow anything forever least of all grow it exponentially, which is how our economic system attempts to grow. What do you think the bailouts are? A big leap exponentially. You can't grow anything organic within a finite container forever. And our economic system is founded on the brain dead notion that we can. And this is a big part of your work. And I know you recently published a a book uh, called Outcry. How did this book come about? Because I know it's connected to, to these, uh, these theses. Yes, well, um, you know, I didn't know that what I was doing over the years was developing following. That sounds, excuse me, I weep very easily. But uh, all of a sudden I found I had a lot of people who were following my work. And one Beautiful. gentleman by the name of Jim Hicks, James Hicks, um, calls himself a big picture guy. He contacted me and and said, next time you come through the East Coast, and I was on my way to Europe at that time, in fact, to COP24 in in Katowice, where our mutual friend Greta uh, joined me on stage four times. She, um, he he said, can we get together for lunch? And he he took me to a vegan cafe in, uh, in New York, and I, he said, I, I love to eat vegan, but I can't possibly be vegan because of food allergies. And I'm a vegan now, but I'm a vegan because of the cancer that I've got. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, if you want to be healthier, ditch the meat. Anyhow, we afterwards, we took a walk. After, after lunch, we took a walk to Central Park and we sat on a bench outside the park, wonderful uh, Central Park. And I asked him a question that he tells me now changed his life. I said, if you were king, what would you do? What would you, how would you change things? And that was the source of the book Outcry. Now, he and I have collaborated on it to the extent that, excuse me again, I can't, I weep for several reasons. I can't use my hands very well because of the neuropathy from the chemotherapy. So he did most of the writing, but we spoke a lot and, and, um, I was able to read his chapters and make comments. And, and there were times that I was able to get somebody to type for me and actually fed back to him. This is the way I would put it. This is the way I would write it. So it's co-authored, but I'll have to say he did most of the typing. So. And you can, where, where can you get hold of this book? It's only available online. Um, I'm sorry to say it's only available through Amazon because I really have very low regard for Amazon. Uh, I, I like to say that, that Jeff Bezos built the biggest marketplace in the world called Amazon hmm. around the destruction of the, the Amazon rainforest. The two are intimately connected, if only by the same, again, the same root cause, 
an economic system which demands we rape the earth and concentrate. Um, in any case, it's available on Amazon through their, their publication, their electronic publication, Kindle, I think it's called. Thank you. Scientist warning, um, tell me a little bit more about what you do. Because I think people are, they're curious now and in, in, in how they could access your, 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 um, your knowledge. Yes, um, I th we have two sides to it. One is the .org, scientists, plural, dot, scientists warning, dot .org. With an S in, in the middle. Okay, with an S, right. And it's, um, it's a very comprehensive website. We're going through restructuring, so, it, you know, under, under construction without the sign-up. But our wiki is very valuable. Um, lots of articles on, on from the commonplace concepts to the uh, somewhat more obscure concepts. Uh, global dimming, which is one that's misunderstood. We have a wonderful article on there. And the other side is scientistswarning.tv. And that's the, the YouTube channel. Uh -huh. That URL forwards to the YouTube channel. Hmm. And there you have a combination of interviews with scientists, the programs I've done at the, at the COPS, um, and uh, opinion pieces, I'll say. Uh, like I did a conversation very recently with a gentleman, James Doyle, uh, uh, excuse me, John Doyle, forgot his name. Oh. John Doyle, who works for the uh, European Union Commission as a member of their foresight group, their group that tries to see what are the impacts of what we're doing now and what we've done uh, in, in the future. And um, we did a very good conversation and part one was published, The End of Normal. And I got that title because it was the subject line on an email he'd written to his colleagues and copied me on. Oh, and it's a remarkable. Title. So please, scientistswarning.tv, The End of Normal, and we'll be publishing part two this week. Excellent. Well, we need all these conversations to, to enlighten us and to, uh, to, to make sure that we really understand the, the severity of, of the situation we're in. Speaking and of, of understanding, move. sorry? And how we should move from here Absolutely. on out. Absolutely. It's all about solutions at this point, because that's, we really don't have to, time to wait for, 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 for any more um, people questioning this. Um, we, don't, we don't have time to wait for the governments to figure it out, because the governments are all enslaved to their central banks and the growth economic mean. Mm. Climate leadership, I always ask my guest about the climate leadership. What does it mean to you, Stuart Scott? And do you have any good examples of climate leadership? You know, uh, that's a, a great question. Um, I wanna say we are all climate leaders. We all have to be climate leaders at this point. Mm. I found myself years ago saying someone should one too many times, and then I realized that I was the someone. Oh yeah, I, we're all, yeah, we're all the, the someone. Exactly, there is, nowadays when someone says, you know, we should, I say, there is no one named we in the room, okay? There's no one named someone in the room. If you had the idea, it was the inspiration that came to you, it's up to you to take the next step. And if you say, oh, I can't do this, then it's up to you to find the people who can, to bring that idea forward, to rise to your highest potential. That's what we need at this point is we need, and, and our, our, our dear Greta Thunberg has done that with millions of kids around the world. Mm. Uh, um, I, I can't pay enough homage to, to that brilliant young woman. So. Mm -hmm. And you, you were the one that brought her to the United Nations the first time in, in yeah. Poland uh, on the stage there. We'll never forget that image. And I just learned, I will have to say that you were the first person to interview her on the second day of her, of her interviewer on camera on the second that's, day of her. That's right, that's right. So we have that in common, one well, of the first meetings. Um, well, <laughs> well, so Stuart Scott, <laughs> <laughs> careful. Stuart Scott, um, examples of climate leadership, except for Greta. Uh, what do you have to say about what's happening in Europe now with the new Green Deal, speaking of economics? Is Merkel um, should be showing proof of climate leadership? Is it enough? I uh, no, it's not enough, and it's it's actively it's actively deceptive in a certain way, because as long as you stay chained to an economic system that demands growth, there is no amount of green dealing mm. um, that you can do to fix this train wreck that that's happening. Um, I I I can't make that point 
enough times in enough ways for people to really finally get it. The way I like to say it most clearly, and this you have to wrap your head around, is that our money with a capital M is not our money anymore. Money owns us. Money has figured out how to use human civilization for its own reproductive purposes. That is money creates more money through the greed and uh, avarice of the wealthiest who are promoted to the top and they influence politicians. And if you follow that rabbit down that rabbit hole, you see that money controls us, not just on a superficial level, but on a very deep level. We need to change that. We need to, and economics, the current growth economics, it's not the only th system possible. I try to promote ecological economics. That's a new term for many people. Hmm. The only way we are going to avoid tragedy, possibly, I mean, a growth, an incredibly large tragedy, is by unhitching ourselves from this growth economics. And I don't care how many green new deals there are. It, they won't help as long as the overall body of the human enterprise is growing. So for the people watching this show and they, they think, hmm, well, this is interesting. How do they go about this? I mean, except for voting for politicians, obviously, that, that have this, this, this way of looking at, 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 at our society, but themselves, how do they, how do they maneuver? It's, it's not easy. It, oh, it's very, very, it's, it's, both difficult, it's both simple and difficult. That is conceptually simple, but it is practically difficult because what you need to do is you need to unhitch yourself from that advertising thing. Oh, you know, I need a new iPhone. They just came out with it. Or I need a new, or I need, a, or, oh, we need to, all of those R's, not just reduce, reuse, recycle. It's repurpose, rethink. I once did a, a, a list, a page full of R's, re this, re that. There are an incredible number of things mm -hmm that we need to change about the way we live in the world in developed nations, I'll say. That's predominantly it. Oh, yes. We, it's, it's different. We, we, you and I, need, and our, our countrymen, countrywomen, need to slow down, not get back on planes when, when the lockdown is, is taken off. We need to see that, hey, Zoom has worked brilliantly for us during this period. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to go back to flying to wherever? And this is not just for work, this is for pleasure, this is for family. Um, we need to stop abusing the planet by one of the chief ways is by flying everywhere. Well, thank you very much, Stuart Scott, for sharing your insights. And I'm sure there will be many people checking into The Scientist Warning, the TV and the, the .org, and uh, checking out your book. And best of luck with, with everything that you pursue. And uh, thank you again for, for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on, on the program. And for all of you viewers, if you want to be part of the climate solution, please join. We don't have time at the, the .org on, on the platform and the, the app where you can share, share your climate stories, reviews, give climate love to companies that actually do good for the climate. And if you're based in Scandinavia, you can join a sustainable tomorrow. Uh, and that's an organization that promotes meetings and events that focus on sustainable business. My name is Katharina rolf stotter Johansson, and I will be back in a week with a new fabulous guest. Thank you. Coming up next week, Mr. Samuli is a serial entrepreneur and investor. He has founded and chaired a number of Sweden's most lauded companies within strategy, marketing, advertising, and digital communication. Samuli is a member of the UNICEF Global Advisory Group.